in high definition. This is News Channel 5, where the news comes first. Good evening. With just 12 days to go, tonight a federal appeals court blocked the execution of a convicted murderer. Reginald Clemens had been sentenced to die June 17th, but his lawyers have been granted a stay while they challenge Missouri's execution procedure. News Channel 5's Jeff Small has reaction to tonight's top story. Jeff? Well, although there are perhaps as many people who agree with it as those angry with what happened today, the court granted the stay because there's still a pending challenge to Missouri's lethal injection. It involves Clemens and several inmates who questioned the state's lethal injection procedure. In February, the same court that granted today's stay heard arguments on the lethal injection case. But as of right now, there is still no ruling. With the clock counting down to his June 17th execution date, Reggie Clemens has won the latest round in his controversial legal fight to spare his life. At least for now, Clemens will remain on death row while his scheduled execution is put on hold. It comes after a controversial decision by the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circuit in St. Louis. Reverend Earl Nance is a member of the St. Louis Clergy Coalition, as well as one of many fighting on behalf of Clemens. We're pleased to, to hear about what the U.S. Uh, Court of Appeals has done because uh, uh, Reggie had a, a uh, court case pending, and we wondered why and really were upset that an uh, uh, execution date was set before uh, there was a ruling on this other court case. Clemens was set to die by lethal injection for his alleged role in the 1991 murders of Robin and Julie Carey. They were raped and thrown from the Chain of Rocks Bridge. Many, including Hollywood actor Danny Glover, have repeatedly come to Clemens' defense, saying his conviction was tainted. We feel that uh, there are too many questions uh, that need to be answered. Uh, uh, the whole situation with the uh, the beating of, uh, of, 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 of these young men for the confessions, and, and we just feel that Reggie uh, is innocent. Yet supporters know their fight to save Clemens is far from over. We're in the faith business, so we hold on to that hope. And uh, you know, there are those of us who will say with the, with the prayers we had last night that God would step in and to hear this news today, uh, that gives us hope. Now, late today, I spoke with a relative of the two murder victims. He declined to go on camera, but says the stay granted by the court today is extremely upsetting and says Clemens is continuing to manipulate the system. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jeff. On his way into court this morning, a man accused of killing a Centerville police officer had just one thing to say. It was a mistake. Lemuel Houston attended his arraignment this morning at the St. Clair County Courthouse. Houston was arrested earlier this week and charged Thursday with first-degree murder. He's being held on $10 million bond. The 22-year-old is accused of shooting Lieutenant Gregory Jonas outside a Centerville housing complex Tuesday morning. Visitation for Jonas will begin tomorrow morning at 9 at Calvary Missionary Baptist Church in Centerville. The funeral follows at noon. The bank robber known as the Booney Hat Bandit faces years in prison after pleading guilty to a string of bank robberies. Donald Giamanco of Florissant made his plea today in U.S. District Court. Prosecutors say the unemployed father of two robbed 12 banks in St. Louis County and St. Charles County. In those robberies, Giamanco made off with amounts ranging from $1,300 to $26,000. He earned his nickname because of the military-style boonie hats he wore in two of the robberies. Giamanco will be sentenced August 13th. He faces up to 20 years in prison on each of the 12 counts. The Keel is on its way to a comeback. Today, the St. Louis Board of Aldermen approved a plan to renovate and reopen the Keel Opera House. The $74 million renovation involves nearly $30 million in public financing. The owners of the Keel hope to start construction in August and reopen the 3,200-seat opera house late next year. And developers hope to start attracting Broadway shows to downtown as part of their offering, but not everyone is excited about another theater in St. Louis. News Channel 5's Casey Nolan is here with part of that story. Casey? Yeah, Kay, the Fox in particular is afraid that the competition will draw patrons away from Grand Center and possibly raise ticket prices. And they're not happy about the public money that will help Kiel's renovation, even though the Fox also got help from the city when it was reopened. <laughs> very good. Are you excited about the show? Very excited. Very excited. The audience may be loyal. Oh, we're probably here five, six times a year at least. But the reviews are mixed. I think the more places that are available, the more people will 
take the time and get out to see the events that are playing. I don't know. I'm partial to the Fox, so I've always gone here since I was younger, and it's a landmark, so I'm not sure. Friday, it became official. The Fox Theater will have competition. After 20 years of sitting dark, the Keel Opera House in downtown will be renovated and reopened with the help of nearly $30 million in public money. We call it thinking abundantly, if you will. We think St. Louis is big enough. We think it can support the two venues. We think there's plenty of shows that tour within the United States. But the owners of the Fox, who also received some city help to reopen, argue the Keel is getting too much assistance and patrons could pay at the ticket booth. Everybody assumes the competition is good, and in a lot of areas it is. But in Broadway, where there's a limited amount of product, that's the exact opposite happens. But it's not just the owners of the Fox objecting to an Opera House encore, but business owners here in Grand Center say they have their reservations too. It's totally dependent on the, on the Fox and the Poe and the Sheldon. So much so that after seven months in business, John McDowell only opens his restaurant, William Shakespeare's, when the curtains are up at one of the Grand Center theaters. I see no reason why they should open another one and waste taxpayers' money. I'm having conflicting feelings about it. Um, I really love Broadway shows, and I always go to the Fox ones when I'm home. Um, but it'd be awesome if there was more available. In fact, a lot of people seem conflicted. It was difficult to get any comment from the St. Louis Regional Arts Commission today, for instance. It seems like a lot of people care sitting on the sidelines waiting to see how this plays out. Right, maybe waiting to hear from other parties in the community before they sound. Perhaps, interested. yes. All right, thanks, Casey. Valley Park's law that bans illegal immigrants from getting jobs there has been upheld by a federal appeals panel. The 8th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals affirmed a lower court's ruling in favor of Valley Park. The town of 6,500 residents has been involved in court battles since passing the immigration law in 2006. The suit was filed by the American Civil Liberties Union. So far, no comment from the ACLU. Not only is Twitter's fake Tony La Russa account gone from the social networking site, now Twitter and the Cardinals' manager have reached a settlement in a lawsuit La Russa filed last month. Twitter's agreed to pay legal fees and make a donation to La Russa's Animal Rescue Foundation. La Russa sued Twitter after someone started a fake account under his name, complete with his picture. The imposter then sent inappropriate tweets about the Cardinals' manager and his team. A Kentucky man who hid his sister's body in the trunk of his car has pleaded guilty in connection with her death. 30-year-old Timothy Brown of Georgetown, Kentucky, was arrested in St. Louis last year. The remains of his sister had been found wrapped in blankets and quilts in the trunk of his car. That car had been found in the 6400 block of Bancroft in St. Louis and towed back to his hometown where the body was discovered. Today, Brown admitted to abuse and neglect of an adult theft by deception and tampering with evidence, along with his guilty plea to a manslaughter charge. Police say 31-year-old Penny Brown's body had been kept in her brother's apartment and car for so long, her remains had begun to mummify.